All right, all right. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Depends on where you are connected from. Once again, you are welcome to Kina F Show. What a popular show in Banana. Everyone is talking about it online. And of course, you know that this is not just about the panelists. It's not about the host or the co-host. It's about you discussing your health, how you can live a robust life. There's a way the host normally put it. Maybe when she introduces it, she will introduce that it's three words. But the one I can remember is that last part, robust life. So today, I'm not alone. Of course, I have the my co-host, Mr. Alex, and we have uh, three panelists mm -hmm. in the house, in the studio, that will be discussing a wonderful topic that every one of us, at one point or the other, we have experienced. So one, let me begin to bring our panelists to introduce themselves to you, and I'm going to be starting, I think it's ending this first, so let me start from Dr. Chema. Over to you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Chema Dakus Oswa Gugunedo. I am a family nurse practitioner. I live in um, Massachusetts. And um, I'm here and I'm pleased to be with you this afternoon. Awesome, awesome. Welcome. Thank you. Dr. Lawrence. Yes. Yeah, um... Listeners, this is Dr. Law Hassan awesome here. I have always featured this program. I live in Maryland right now where I have a clinic. Lanham, Maryland. So today we are here to discuss a very important topic. I'm sure people are now ready to listen to what we have to say. You're all welcome to the program. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we also have one of the panelists in the house. I don't think I'm qualified to introduce him. So yes. let him introduce himself. Over to you, I Chief. Good day, good night, as you said, wherever you may be. My name is Okenze, Hi Chief. I'm a psychotherapist in Dallas, Texas. Been in therapy for been in therapy for some time now. We practice Comprehensive mental health and substance use disorder. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, and awesome. You are welcome. So over to you, Mr. Alex. Introduce yourself uh, to our viewers. You are muted. Trying to make sure that these personalities, this espas and these health providers will try to get across what they have to you. Thank you. Awesome, you are so welcome. Uh, before I bring in the host who we introduce to this topic, and of course, uh, you know, start the show, I want to encourage you that this program is supposed not to be like a radio program, even though radio program these days is even a two-way direction. Before they used to say radio program was just one way. Now you can call in, you can dial in. So the same thing is this. So how we can know that you are enjoying this program? Number one is you like this, like this video. If you are watching this on YouTube or if you are watching it on Facebook, like it. Then try to be you know uh, participative, participate in this show by asking questions. You know by nodding your head. So your contribution your opinion counts a lot and share this video with somebody you don't know whom is going to be who is going to benefit from it okay somebody might be going through the topic that we are discussing and just by you merely just merely sharing it you've saved life and you don't know so join me with start innovation while we remain seated as i bring in the host dr kina omneko as she introduces today's topic Hello, everyone from all over the world. Uh, my name is Kino Menokor. I am a family nurse practitioner and also a mental health nurse practitioner um, here in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the show. Um, today's topic is a very important topic, um, insomnia. Um, insomnia um, is a sleep disorder, which, uh, which means you have trouble either falling asleep or um, staying asleep. Uh, the condition can be acute, um, short-term, or long-term. 
it varies for some people. It could be one night to a couple of weeks or long term, you know, a couple of weeks to several, several months. Um, why should we address uh, insomnia? Sleep plays a very important role in our physical health. Sleep is involved in the healing and repair of heart and blood vessels. Many people experience problems with sleeping, including either not getting enough sleep or feeling not rested, not feeling rested when they wake up in the morning. Some don't sleep at all, or some don't sleep very well. Continuous sleep deficiency is linked to increased risk of heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke. Inadequate sleep can lead to difficulty. It can have an unpleasant effect on work, your social life, family life. And insomnia is highly a comorbid, um, highly comorbid with psychiatric disorders. Insomnia is a risk factor for developing depression, anxiety, and even suicide. Sleep issues can be a sign of an impending um, condition such as bipolar disorder. Um, many medical and mental health conditions can be worsened by sleep problems. Um, I'm welcoming you all to this show today. Uh, we have our panelists here who are going to dive into this discussion so that um, we can all get a restful night's nice sleep and be very functional. Uh, welcome to the show. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Shall we just share the grace because the host has already summarized all the topics, everything that needs to be discussed. She has compressed that in that one minute. So shall we share the grace? <laughs> okay, over to you, Mr. Alex, as we begin to look into the topics and the questions. Okay, we we'll take off by asking, trying to let them know let the ordinary person should be able to know when they see insomnia, insomnia. Uh, Dr. Law Sondo, can we take off from there? Let's us let the layman, can you try break it down into the language of the layman and then what you feel are the causes? What okay. is it and what are the causes here? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen and members of the audience. The panelist, uh, insomnia is something that everybody would have suffered once or twice before. No matter, even a, even a little girl, little child can have insomnia. So it's, it's, it's not something that you go far to find or to explain to somebody what it is. It is simply inability to sleep to start sleep. You can go to bed by 8 o'clock and by 12 midnight you haven't slept. That is insomnia. Even if it's a bed that it comes, you might not have enough time to sleep till you wake up the next morning. You can also go to bed and then you sleep for, for a little while. And I went to bed and slept. And after two hours, I slept, I woke up, I grabbed my phone, and I was awake throughout the morning. That was an insomnia. So it happens depending on certain situations and certain conditions. It could just be because of so many things. What is eating us, what happened to you during the day, or things you met on the way, and all that. So I don't think I'll go that far to explain the causes of insomnia right now. But insomnia is basically inability to sleep or to stay asleep, or to sleep through the night, or sleep enough to give you a restful sleep through, through the night. Thank you. Yeah, before Dr. Uh, Dr. Kina comes in, has anybody anything to add to this, what the, the law has said? Members of the other panel, do you have anything to add? Chioma or, or Kenze? Um, the only thing I have to add, this is Dr. Chioma, is that um, uh, insomnia could also be acute or chronic. When it's acute, it happens for a short period of time and it results. 
But when it's chronic, it extends for a very long time. So that's the only thing I want to add to what Dr. Law has said. I don't know if uh, Dr. Dog was Dr. Said. Kina. All right. Um, Mr. How do how do we know when insomnia is affecting our mental health? Who am I asking? You. Okay. Okay. We can tell when somebody becomes irritable, less functional during the day, tired most of the day, angry most of the time, loss of appetite total displeasure, feeling that the day is not worth it, afraid to go to sleep, thought of going to sleep. When you begin to see signs like that, you begin to consider insomnia. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Before we continue with uh, the mental health, are we okay with the causes? Are we satisfied with what causes insomnia? Do we, have anything, do we have anything to add because I want to believe it has not been properly treated? Uh, I think we've not exhausted it. There are so many causes of uh, insomnia, uh, of which mental health is one of them. Uh, if we if we had listened to what Dr. Kina and Chief Osavu said, mental health is a big thing, especially when you have anxiety disorder, when you're depressed, it can cause insomnia. Sometimes the medications that you take can also cause insomnia. For instance, if you're a depressed patient and they're giving you medications to make you, you know, like feel good, it can stop you from sleeping. Other things could be your habit. If you, if you like to eat heavy meals at night, um, you know, instead of snacking, you, it can keep you awake. You can have something called gast a gastric esophageal reflux problems where acid starts to pull up and you cannot sleep. What are the symptoms, other things that can cause you for, uh, cause insomnia are things like pain. If you're in severe pain, you can't sleep. Another uh, 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 symptom could be restless legs. You're sleeping and your legs are moving or you have sleep. There are so many things that can cause insomnia. So I would like uh, Dr. Law and uh, Dr. Kina to add to it. We have a uh, before the before they add to it, is it possible that even sleeping medication could also cause insomnia? Is it possible? Um what do you is it that you're taking less or you're taking too much of it? Because, because I noticed okay we 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 have a foster home right so I noticed with one of the foster kids there is uh there's a medication that he's supposed to take to sleep. Uh -huh. But I noticed that sometimes when he takes that medication, he will just stay wide awake. Okay. So could that be possible that you are taking a sleeping medication, but yet you stay? So, so what happens in that situation is that the body is reacting negatively to it. Because I have a friend whose uh, family member takes sleeping pill. And the day she takes it, she stays up more than the day she doesn't take it. So the doctor had to stop them from taking it. And it usually happens with most of the over-the-counter um, or lesser medications. I don't want to mention names, but yes, if you take it and it's happening, go back to the doctor. They might prescribe something else. If, if you don't have to stay on that. That's awesome. Thank question. you. Thank you. Okay. Over to you. Dr. Okay. Yes. Uh, there are so many things I can cause uh, insomnia. Uh, it is not uh, easy for us to exhaust all of them today. And there are some we will not remember. But generally, what you just described is a kind of paradoxical effect of certain medications. There are people that take uh, value pack and they sleep for two days. And some take it and they keep awake for two days. So sometimes you have such paradoxical effect of certain medications on some people. So that's exactly what you just described now. Uh, but we all know that there are certain things we do that keep us awake at night. It depends on individual. For instance, some people eat cola nuts and they can't sleep. And some of us eat a basket of it and they sleep all night. 
some take coffee and they can't sleep. So generally, top 10 is supposed to you know, cause some level of insomnia. But it doesn't happen in everybody. Some people don't. Uh, then another thing is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is you sleep in a particular position, and at some point, your tongue falls back and blocks your airways, and then you wake up with some kind of a panic attack because you are almost shutting down because your oxygen is getting low. So that thing can keep you awake all night. You sleep and work, sleep and work. And by the end of the day, you are exhausted. And that is what causes the use of uh, CPAP machines and some other devices that can keep your airway open so that you can breathe through the night. So sleep apnea, can we cannot really exhaust it. It depends on individuals and it depends on your environment and things you're doing and everything that affects you generally. Thank you. Thank you. And I think from what we've been discussing, I've not really heard the word loss also. I think loss also could, like when, when you lose a beloved one or you lose finance, you lose money, you lose assets, you are, you are a business person, you lost in business that also could actually cause insomnia because you're just up and you are thinking about what happened trauma generally could also cause it am i correct you're you're correct yeah and there's so many other things that can cause insomnia noise light temperature um there are people who work and um that that would be a big problem there some of them when they come back, they can't sleep. Um, and some people have acquired bad habits. Um, how about a digital world now we're in? Most kids are on their phone or their computer and laptops, you know, all night long, and they're not sleeping. And let's not forget other health conditions. You know, if you're uh, if you're in pain, you have cancer, heartburn. Um, those are other things that can cause insomnia. It's a whole variety of things that can cause insomnia. Yeah, I want, to, I want to chip in to say, let us not forget stress that keeps you on a fight, fight or flight mood. You cannot sleep in that condition because your adrenaline has secreted and it's going to keep you awake because you are ready to fight. So sometimes it happens if we are angry, extremely angry, or you are afraid of something, you may not close your eyes because uh, there are the conditions under which you can sleep is not there. So that's why sometimes you may have to take anti-anxiety to depress the anxiety, depress the cortisol, so that now your body can now go in the other direction so that you can get some sleep. So a lot of chemistry that goes on in our system to stop our sleep. So that's how it is. Yeah, okay. What, um, what uh, Dr. Manuel described mm -hmm. could be described as situational insomnia. You know what is causing it. Those kind of issues in psychotherapy, we can easily handle it. We've identified what the problem is. It's easily handled. If it's loss, if it is grief, it is... Um, loss of uh, material stuff that is an easy one to address so what you describe is situational insomnia which can be addressed when the problem goes away or when the problem is resolved then the insomnia may go away so that is um, a different type of insomnia which can easily be resolved thank you yeah, I, Dr. 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 Okay, I want you to also address this issue what do you consider to be the most dangerous impact or consequences of insomnia. Uh, Dr. Dr. Kenze, I wanted to mention women also. Women going through menopause, um, that's a big uh, cause of insomnia. You hear them talk about hot flashes. If it happens at night, they stay up all night. I didn't want us to miss that, or, or women going through their monthly periods. 
So, Dr. Kenze, please continue. Sorry to interrupt. And uh, before he continues, also at church today and also last week, what we discussed was sexual intimacy in marriage. Sexual intimacy could also cause insomnia. When he's not getting it or she is not getting it, one of them is going to be awake. And uh, so, what type of insomnia is that, I chief? Still situational. You know what your problem is. <laughs> then you can, your psychotherapist can help you, your marriage and family therapist can help you identify the reason. Somebody who is refusing and somebody who is asking may have their reasons. Those are not, to me, are not really very, very serious because you already diagnosed what the problem is. So if the problem is diagnosed, solution is forthcoming. So it is also considered situational. You know what is causing it? Yeah, we can help you sort it out. In a couple counseling, we can sort it out. So that's what I think. It's not a, it shouldn't be a major issue as in mental illness. That may not be considered mental illness. It may be considered behavioral issue, relationship challenges, which are resolvable. Thank okay, you. so I, I see that we've spent 20 minutes trying to look into what insomnia is, causes of insomnia. Uh, we've not really discussed how does insomnia cause or lead to mental health. And since we're talking about types of uh, mental, uh, types of insomnia, maybe we can just combine that. How does, you know, insomnia lead to mental health and uh, what types of insomnia do we have? Maybe we should just go ahead and uh, combine that and discuss that. Anybody can go. Okay. As we earlier said, dysfunctional, self-defeating lifestyle can cause this. If it becomes persistent, if it, if it is unresolved, as Dr. Menoko said earlier, you begin to see this anxiety, you begin to see this uh, stress, you begin to see this depression, possible hyperactivity in, in young people. So those are the possible ways you can say that something is becoming an issue. It is not satisfied with your daily life as a result of loss of sleep. So that's the way I look at it briefly. The anxiety, whatever may cause it, but you know that something is not going well. What are the consequences? What yeah. are the consequences? Uh, before I go into the consequences, um, if it is mental illness, then somebody has to define what is mental illness works. If that definition is given, then we find out whether it's a man can cause those uh, conditions. If they can cause those conditions, they are linked, they are linked to mental illness. So mental illness is usually when somebody cannot function. Again, he cannot do his work. He cannot have very good relationship with people. And uh, some of the things he will do will not be exactly how he expected to be done. People get disappointed with what he does periodically. And therefore, how does insomnia cause this? One, one of the major things insomnia can cause is you could die. Because it can cause you not live soon. You can suddenly fall asleep on the steering and you can die. That is very dangerous. So, and if you're somebody that's working in an office, you can fall suddenly asleep when your boss is approaching the office. And that fires you right there. So you can see all the problems that insomnia can cause you. And once it goes from that level to that, the next level you're going into depression and the rest of that. So there are so many things insomnia can cause. It will make you very, very ineffective in the in work and the overall effect. You will be very irritable. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to fight with people around you, if you continue to get slapped like that of a Bianca. <laughs> 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 then, you know you are, something is going on. Something is wrong. And that's, you're not functioning. And people even say that the wife of that government is only being. Yeah, some level of mental 
instability, somebody that continues to provoke people. Things like that happen. She might not have slept the whole of last night because <laughs> of what she's expecting the next day. So, so far and so forth. You can go on and on and on and on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Dr. Choma, how many hours of sleep do we require to get uh, on a daily basis? Um, so as an adult, you should have at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, I know that uh, as you get older, your sleep uh, habit changes and you sleep less. But if I, when I go to my clients, the question I ask is, oh, Chioma, I slept for only five hours or four hours last night. My question will be, do you sleep during the day? And usually, you know, older folks, when they're watching TV, they fall asleep. And they'll say, oh, uh, the TV, I woke up and the TV was on. Uh, is it on my end? She's frozen. I think it's her end because she's frozen on me too. Okay. I think it cut off. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So what? Uh, seven to eight hours is ideal. But if you cannot get seven to eight hours, you can do uh, with that napping during the day. You know, you can tell them put down on the naps and um, try to sleep at a specific time. Wake up at the so th those are things that we do, but seven to eight hours from your question. Thank you. I have I have an observation also with that uh, question and the answer. I know uh, that's what the doctors uh, tell us. Uh, so, but when you sleep for eight hours, that is one third of the day. So apparently, when you are sixty years old, indirectly you have slept for twenty years. So, what what do we have to say about that? I mean, that is contrary to what motivational speakers will tell us, or even some teachings also will tell us. Because when you sleep for 20 years, out of 60 years of your life, so... Does it mean you should die then? No. <laughs> but those people that recommend that seven to eight hours, do they really sleep seven to eight they hours? They do. They do. Uh, but, but that's what I told you. Some people will break it up. But if you want to have a straight sleep, cut down on your nap period. Remember when we were back home, we used to have siesta. And then at night, the uh, senior prefects will be chasing you to go sleep. So uh, right now, I realize that that CS that was taking away time from us to sleep. So please sleep if you can sleep. Don't worry about motivational speakers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue. In addition to what the doc says, again, this is differential in the sense that it depends on the ability and functionality of the individual. Some people, that is a statistical figures, eight to seven, nine to, nine to for children, nine or more. It's a statistic, statistical figure, research-based figure, which may differ from individual to individual. Generally, we say that if you are taking less than eight hours and it is not bothering you, and you are highly functioning during the day, we may not worry too much about it. Not to discount what the doc said, but to say that for our audience, for our audience, if you don't get six or eight hours and you are highly functioning through, during the day, you are happy during the day, you are productive during the day, I will not concentrate too much on my eight hours or more. Thank you. Uh, we get to a very critical point. Can insom insomnia go away on its own? Can you allow it to flow and sometimes you discover you start sleeping again? Uh, or do, do you need to do, do you need to do something about it? Uh, I, can I say something there? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think insomnia can go away because we all have had our different experiences. There are certain, certain situations that will make you sleepless. And you may be preparing for an exam. And the anxiety, you know, will not let you sleep and sleep very well. You are preparing for a show very early in the morning. And you put an alarm and you wake up three times before the alarm rings. So some of those things are things that are, are situational. But when it goes away, then you can, you can go back and sleep like a baby. 
So I don't think insomnia is a permanent situation unless some people who have some chronic conditions. But if anything, something is done and you find out exactly why they are doing that. Remember that when somebody's sleeping, that's when the most of the hormones are secreted. And some of those hormones do certain functions in the body. And if you have been denying yourself of certain sleep, certain hormones might be lacking in your system. And if that is not there, the way your body should regenerate and go back to its normal situation and so that you can fall to sleep may take some time before it resets. I remember that thyroid gland is sad. If it is too much, you are not going to sleep very well. You will have nice words. You will be very uncomfortable. You might not sleep. But as soon as it comes back to you, tired, you might go back to sleep. Or if you start taking medications, everything, and your safe relief from and homeostasis in the body, your body can go back to sleep. So it could just last temporarily or for a long time. But it adjusts itself sometimes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, before we continue, uh, I have a slide from uh, Dr. Kina. I don't know when do you want to you want to talk about it, or we should stick continue going. No, we need to keep going. It's okay. 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 Over to you, Mr. Alex. Um, no, we are talking about insomnia going going away on its own. So, if it can go away on its own, is there also a possibility that you can prevent? If it comes and it's not going away, is there a way, do you have a way of preventing it from becoming a serious mental health issue? Because from what we've been saying, it could also degenerate to a mental issue. So how do you stop that? Um, you know, we the three of us, we've, uh, we've talked about causes of insomnia. So if you had, if our audience, if you are listening, we said some of them are situational, some of them are environmental. For instance, if you live near an airport where the plane flies all over you know at a certain time and you want to fall asleep that noise although i've been to people who live by the train station and the train passes and i jump and they said to me i don't even hear it anymore so they got used to it but if you get if you live in, in an environment where there's so much noise or you are causing the noise yourself or your children are playing loud music and it's time to sleep just you know cut it down that's one of the things that will stop you from not having insomnia Another thing, like Dr. Kina mentioned, was, was the screen time. I have this habit that all my gadgets, 10 p.m., goes up because I want to sleep. So people should learn what suits them and what they can work with. For um, some of us, we can't change. Like uh, if you're in Africa on some parts of the world where you have rotational shift, you work days this week, next week you work nights, next week you work evenings. When you finish nights, I know that they give, used to give them some days off to sleep. Remember, it's time for your body to catch up, not time for you to go start shopping or going to the farm. Use it, sleep, and catch up for the ones that you've lost. There's a friend of mine who always tells me that you can't cheat your body. When you stay up for a long time, one day you will sleep and catch up. So that's the only thing I can add. I, I, I would like um, the other panelists to add things to it. Please, thanks. Yeah, yeah we're talking about how to prevent this insomnia. So let's go ahead and uh, get your views. As we earlier said, if it is situational, it is left for you now to address those issues that cause it in the first place. You prevent it like that. If it is chronic or mental illness, then my colleagues in the medical field may help you with that. Essentially, if it is a lifestyle, that can easily be prevented. Psychotherapy can help you with that. If it is mental illness, this our doctor can help you with that. As I said also, check your lifestyle. What are you doing during the day? What are you doing at night? Whatever the issue is, there is remedy. Let's address it. In other words, medical or behavioral or lifestyle. They can be treated. They can be prevented. Thank you. Wonderful. Kina, 
Does yes. anybody have anything to add? Or can I go ahead and take the next question? Um, what I wanted to add to um, what you just said is that insomnia could be, um, like everybody has said, it could be um, a situation like, like you're taking an exam and um, all those type things and it will go away. But most people who are suffering from chronic insomnia, they need some medication to help them sleep. Um, so there are some out there. Um, some of them are like over the counter. Um, melatonin, you can get those over the counter. It can help. I do know that some people take Benadryl um, and um, some other things. There are some teas also, um, non pharmacological um, uh, you could do to help you sleep. So um, it depends. Like I always say, whenever you're going through um, a situation and you cannot, you won't say um, medical attention, always go back to your provider. So moving ahead, um, we've talked about, you know, the what are the ways um, to help people to make sure that they get enough sleep? Anybody can jump in. So we are talking about treatment now from our yes. point of view, psychotherapy point of view. The doctor here will talk from medical point of view. One of the, yes. some of the things we recommend include eliminate obvious causes of insomnia if you know it, if you can. Add activities that help promote sleep. Vigorous daytime exercise can also help you. Think about and enjoy pleasurable, satisfying activities at the night. I don't know what doctor said that you discussed last week. Some people may find it satisfying to engage in sexual intercourse as a way of addressing insomnia when they wake up at the middle of the night 11 o'clock 12 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock and so on and so forth as we also said you can also if you eat late don't eat late if you can read they've found out that um, reading can also help you sleep the doctor mentioned paradoxical intention earlier that has also been a measure to treat insomnia say for example i want to go to bed I'll go take my book to read. By the time you read half the chapter, you fall asleep. Even though your intention is not really to read, it's to go to sleep. <laughs> so those are come, some of the ways <laughs> we have uh, seen people get over insomnia. Thank you. Yeah, you, you made mention of one, and I want us to you quickly skip through it, but I think it's very important we dive into it a little bit before we continue. Uh, as I told you, that's what we treated in church even last week and this week, because after money, after finance, the next area that the family is having issues is the, the area of sex. So how does that help to prevent insomnia? You made mention of it, but you quickly skip through it. How does it really, really help to prevent insomnia? It's like that exercise you talked about. It's a, it's a physical exercise. It's like that pleasure is the relaxation that comes after. Those are the areas uh, intercourse can help you in at night. If you, are, if you are restless, after that you may fall asleep, your muscle may, may relax. So those are uh, a common way to look at that one. Is but, there any hormone that is released that can make you calm down? Doc is here to answer that. <laughs> any of the doctors in the, in the house? <laughs> Okay, Dr. Kina, over to you. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to Dr. Law to answer. I think he will best. Okay, Dr. Law. Yeah, the, during intercourse, a lot of things happen. 
Uh, initially, just heightened tensions of uh, excitement that goes around between the two people. But eventually, the, everything, the first thing they, when the two of them, or when one of them comes, then there's a relaxation that follows. I think what you released then is too for me in a same thing. I'm not too sure about it now. Uh, endorphins that make you relax, calm down. And then most of the times, most 80% of men sleep off at that time, even if it is just for one minute. And so I don't know about women, I'm talking about our own experience. <laughs> but I think it happens. It's simultaneous. Both people fall asleep for a period of time or continue to to sleep for the rest of the day. So just relaxing the effect that sex has on people. And it should not be underestimated because it can really help with the insomnia. So um, I don't say there are so many other things. Something like massaging, somebody can, instead of sex, decides to do massage. One person or the other. By the time you go through the process, you may not even get to the end of it before the person has already fallen asleep. So anything that relaxes you, whether it is sex or massage, or work, or you went to a chiropractor, some of these things have a way of releasing some of the things that make you feel comfortable and then fall asleep. All right. So we all know that. I'm sure Alex knows that from experience. <laughs> from experience, yes. So, uh, so we're talking about uh, we're talking about the hormones. Because <laughs> Doctor Doctor Choma talks about some people take uh, melatonin. I, mean, I think it was the like Doctor Kina. Some people take melatonin. Some people take Benadryl. So let's assume that okay, you want to go non-pharmaceutical. You don't want to take medication. Mm -hmm. That is when that also could help, uh, most especially when you are married anyway. So the, the one of the one of the hormones that secretes during that time is oxytocin. Oxytocin could you know, be released. And when that released, of course, it automatically is heavenly fenega, it's divine fenega. It puts you to sleep and you sleep. And uh, like Dr. Law said, you can continue to sleep for the rest of the day. That is when it happens during the day. And if it's at night, you can continue to sleep for the rest of the night. The, the law said, okay, okay, so let's continue. That we go, we, let's go on from there. Is Thank it uh, uh, how, how true is that such on that females are more susceptible to insomnia than men, and why? Is it well, true? I, I mentioned it before, and I said, um, women during their period, yes, they they they, they have these hormonal th changes that go on, and uh, some of them don't sleep, it doesn't happen to every woman, but. During menopause, which is the big one, um, a lot of women not go through what they call hot flashes. You know, um, they can't sleep, they sweat, they're feeling hot. So if something like that happens to you at night, you, you're going to stay up all night. So um, some of the remedies for that could be um, taking a warm bath, being on medications, which the doc your doctor will prescribe for you to help you uh, uh, have some, ha replace the hormone that you're losing. Another thing is trying to have your room, you know, um, quiet and darkened. Um, but if you live in countries that are very hot and you don't have electricity, I don't think you can have air condition. So that becomes a problem. So hormonal changes in women causes insomnia. And that's why it looks like women's uh, women suffer more from insomnia than men at a certain time in their life. Okay, no. I don't know, Dr. Kira, if you want to that. Um, yeah. So we're still talking about ways to treat insomnia. Um, does Dr. Law have anything else to add? Um, things like we've talked a little bit about you know, noise and turning off your phone, uh, making sure that you do not drink caffeine or too much water. And um, that's another issue that we didn't bring up earlier because some men or, uh, that have a um, prostate problem that have to go to the bathroom frequently, that 
is another thing that can cause people insomnia if you having um, having to use the bathroom very frequently. And um, also, there is a digital well-being. Uh, I think some of the phones now have where you can turn off your phone and um, and and your digital gadgets so that you can um, get some sleep. Um, another another area. Um, some of the things that people can do um, to uh, make sure that um, they they get some sleep is to um, make sure that they you know turn off things like their light and noise and um, you know and um, some people do exercise to help them sleep. Some people when you do exercise in the evening, it can also cause them insomnia. So know your body, know what works for you and um, how it affects you and just pick what you know would work best for you to make sure that you get some sleep. Okay, okay. Alex. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the area I wanted to touch is that in primary care, you find that most often when the people come in and they have been some near and you go through their history, you'll find out that they have history of depression sometimes or they have some side issues. Uh, most of the time when they take medication for those side problems, they end up solving the problems of their insomnia. And sometimes it appears like they are taking the medication for sleep because when they take it, they sleep. But it is good for depression and sleep as well. It is rather taking care of the depression and giving your body the leeway to relax and sleep. So most psych patients have one way or the other a way to react to sleeplessness or sleeping too much. So and it is for the site doctor to balance this because uh, narcolepsy is usually very common in people who suffer from depression. So it is a, a, a thing that the doctor has to continue to adjust medications most of the times. So when it's too much, you adjust it. When it's too small, you increase it. They come back for more examination and go on and on and on until the person gets to the stage where he can cruise up. So thank you. Uh, that, that takes us to another important question. Suppose if um, somebody has insomnia and is not treated for a long time and the thing continues, what are the possible complications? What are the possible complications of untreated insomnia? Well, if you have untreated, can I shoot? Go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, so if you have untreated insomnia, there's so many health problems that can come from that. One of them is um, your blood pressure will actually go, go up because um, your hormones are just all worked up. So you, you, you have a tendency of having high blood pressure. You have a tendency of suffering from headaches, frequent headaches. You also have a tendency of having uncontrolled diabetes because it, that will lead to stress and your blood sugar will just be all over the place, especially the uh, blood sugar at night. So, um, uh, you know, your blood sugar will go up and then fall uh, to a low level and then everything is just out, out of place. You're very irritable. You have anxiety. You have depression, like Dr. Law mentioned. So there's a whole lot of medical issues that can come up with um, um, uh, insomnia. So if you're having insomnia and you think you're having people around you are telling you you're becoming very irritable, please seek help through your provider. Or if it's something that uh, uh, Chief mentioned, you can also seek help through your psychoanalyst and see what they can help you do to just um, um, get out of that situation. Thank you. 
Yeah, who has okay. anything to uh, add? Dr. Kina, you have any follow-up uh, statement or questions based on that? Um, no. No, we can um, we can move ahead. Mr. Alex, you have another question. Well, I wanted to ask if there are spe are there specific tests um, that are done to identify who has insomnia. If somebody is complaining, do you do tests or we just ask questions and then reach determine what is the problem from his answers or is he is he is he are there tests also that could be done in addition uh, the issue about such tests is uh, uh it's just like somebody tells you that he has a pain has pain there's nothing you are going to Check to see whether it's past ten. You take it what? Some of the tests you can't sleep. Then you take it that you can't sleep. But if you want to look into the complications or comorbidities that come with sleeplessness to find out the root cause of it and see how you can help the person, then you can use certain tools. Uh, you can use the tool for. Uh, Sleep apnea. I administer it in my office here sometimes. If I see your problem is related to sleep apnea, and give you uh, the form to feel. If you feel it and you are positive, I refer you. And then also, if I, yeah, from what you're telling me, and I believe you have anxiety problem, I, I, I pull up the anxiety tool and give it to feel out. If we are positive, I refer it to a psychiatrist. The same thing with depression. So those most of the times are comorbidities. But to find out that somebody is not sleeping, you basically depend on what you say. And then find out how you can help the person. Ask other questions to see whether it is related to some other things you can find. Thank you. Again, Let me to add to not to add from psychotherapy point of view we are talking about hyper arousal hyper arousal somebody being overly alert from my own point of view we do the assessment lifestyle assessment life management assessment if we are able to check you are always fatigued always tired your mood always not what you would like, always frustrated. You don't sleep, you're afraid to sleep, you worry about going to sleep, you worry if you're going to sleep. Those are from psychotherapy point of view, our assessment to know that we may have to address those causes because we're dealing with hyper arousal condition. So that's our own kind of assessment, which is different from the doctor's type of assessment to determine insomnia. Let me chime in here. When a patient is complaining of insomnia and they come to the doctor, um, there are basic tests that you will do to rule out any organic um, problem there. So is you start from the basic. You do your check their kidney, their liver, your their thyroid. You check their hormone, and um, you check everything. Are they anemic? What could be causing it? So you take a comprehensive approach um, to, to it and eliminate certain things and then um, try to figure out, like they've, um, Dr. Law pulled out the, um, talked about the tools that you can use to do some screenings. So it's something that you have to take a comprehensive and a holistic approach to determine what is causing. Is it due to pain? Some people can't sleep because they're in pain all day long, chronic pain. So you have to figure out and eliminate things and rule in and rule out and then decide whether you need to send them um, referral to a pain management doctor or a psychotherapist or, or if it's a related to mental health issue, you refer them to the psychiatrist. So it is, um, insomnia is a, uh, an important um, topic and um, that we've treated today. 
And uh, we've seen how it could affect your blood pressure, your blood sugar. So these are the things that when they come in, you have to check all these areas to see uh, what other referrals or resources that you will need to um, give to the patient. All right, all right. It's been it's been a wonderful, wonderful session today. Uh, do we have any other question to cover before we begin to give our elevators? No, no, we are done. All right. So as let usual, me please let me to... mention. Often we when we treat uh, insomnia, we talk about cognitive behavior therapy, which is very very important. In that we have to think about we have to make effort to counter our dysfunctional beliefs. We have to do whatever we can to change our negative attitude towards sleeping and avoid any cognitive distortion. Those are paramount in addressing insomnia. If your paradigm is not right, if your concept is not right, it may be affecting even the medication, even psychotherapy. I think I need to mention that cognitive behavior therapy is very, very highly recommended in the treatment of insomnia. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. So uh, we've come to the end of today's uh, discussion. But before we go, as usual, we love to like uh, drop what we call the take home speech. So if someone is just connecting with us or someone has been with us and you just want to drop, OK, this is one, two, three, A, B, C, your take home from today's conversation what would that be so you just take it from one person to another and i will start ladies first i think i'm born again today so i will start from uh, dr chama ladies first then dr law and the i chief over to you thank you dr emmanuel for being born again as always um, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it's been a very interesting discussion please make sure you sleep Seven to eight hours if you can. If you can't, like uh, High Chief said, sleep as much as you can and function well. We don't want people running around, being irritable, slapping, or fighting people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Panel, for these discussions. I have also learned some new things here and there today. So it is very interesting for us to gather here from time to time to let people understand what we are looking at. Everybody, please get some sleep. You can't practically not do that. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I chief. Yes. First of all, I appreciate Dr. Manok. I don't know where she finds energy to be doing what she's doing. For our audience, remember we are dealing with what we call hyper arousal, very tendency to be awfully awake most of the time. They can be solved. When you have such issue, ask somebody. You may find help more than you think. Don't just think it will go away. Some of them, you need somebody to help you go away. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. And uh, as usual, uh, Mr. Alex, what do you say your take home? Well, my take home is that I have been, they have reinforced the importance of sleep and the importance of seeking help when you cannot sleep. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Once again, my name is Emmanuel Adigbola and it's been a pleasure. I learned also seriously today and uh, I will keep what I learned to myself. If you want to get it, you can contact me. <laughs> Over to you. Dr. Kina, as we close today's show. Wow, what another wonderful topic. I uh, thank our panelists. Um, they've always done justice to every topic we pick up and um, um, enriching our audience um, out there and um, increasing their knowledge and more importantly, helping them to live a long, robust life that's the three words mr emmanuel wanted to say earlier on he couldn't say um it was a wonderful topic today um we have all seen how important sleep is if you don't sleep if you don't get enough rest if you don't feel rested in the morning you're not sleeping at all or you're sleeping too much which could also be a problem you need to <laughs> go to your provider 
Um, sleep is very critical for your functioning. You want to function the next day. If you don't sleep, you're irritable. You can get along with other people. You cannot um, complete your tasks. And um, the, some of the important things to remember is that remember that to sleep, you have to mindfully prepare to sleep. Don't have your phone by your side or uh, your computer um, light up, your room lighted up. Um, don't exercise vigorously or maybe if you exercise vigorously, if that works for you, um, that can help you go to sleep. Um, take up some reading if you want to. Um, avoid things like caffeine, alcohol, eating too much um, light meal before you go to bed. And if you have health conditions, make sure they're under control. Things like, like acid reflux diseases and shortness of breath, not being able to breathe. These are some of the things that can affect your sleep and, of course, pain. And it's important that you go to your doctor whenever you have a condition that does not go away, that worsens as the day goes by. Um, it is important to get some sleep and so that you can function the next day. And um, I thank all of you for listening to us today. And we will see all of you in two weeks' time.